各位观众好，我是段宏玉，我是安心健康事业股份有限公司副总经理及中华生医科技应用协会法务长。欢迎来到 h e t v 节目 ，Zeman Software f o r c e s and Save on IP。今天我们非常荣幸邀请到软件取证专家证人 Zeman 先生来分享他在 Facebook 上取得的巨大成功案例。软件取证是分析软件源代码或是二进制代码。以确定是否发生知识产权侵权或盗窃的科学，日本先生开发的 COS 的演算法、技术和程序，已经在全球100多个案例中使用。日本先生曾担任过250起涉及数十亿美元知识产权案件和顾问和作证专家。日本先生，您能否记忆告诉我们您是如何被聘雇来处理 Facebook 案？关于 Facebook 案的起源和争论？您是如何分析 Facebook 的代码和 ConnectU 的代码，来确定马克扎克伯格是否从 ConnectU 复制了代码来创办 Facebook？ 关于这个案例改变的电影《社交网络》，您是否在电影里面 ？The Facebook case was one of the most interesting of my career. Basically, I had created the code match tool for comparing code and used it on a few relatively small cases. And then one day, I got a phone call from a partner at a major Silicon Valley law firm, and he told me that they needed a code comparison, and they'd heard about my tool, and、uh, could I come work for them? And he gave me the details, and I got pretty excited, and I said yes, and I hung up. And then I went to my wife, and I told her I just got the biggest case of my career.、Uh, it involves a client who's willing to pay whatever it takes to do a code comparison, spend as much time on it as I need.、Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to validate my forensics tools. It's going to give me great experience and make me a lot of money. Assuming that the client could pay, I was really concerned that maybe the client couldn't pay. So I asked her, "Have you ever heard of a company called the Facebook?" At this time, this was 2004. And Facebook was used mainly on college campuses, and so nobody outside of the colleges had really heard of Facebook. So、uh, the case was that Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, had attended Harvard with two twins、uh, named Winklevoss, the Winklevoss twins, and the Winklevoss twins had come up with an idea for a social network, and they hired a programmer to start writing the code. And when that programmer graduated, they needed someone to take over. They'd heard about this great programmer, Mark Zuckerberg, so they contacted him and they told him about their idea, and he thought it was a great idea. So he went back to his dorm room and wrote the code himself for the Facebook. As Facebook took off, the Winklevoss twins sued him, saying that he had copied their code. So、uh, what happened was the lawyers gathered all the hard disks from throughout. The entire company of Facebook. They made images of those disks and they gave them to me, and said, "Find anything that looks like it could be software and compare it to the Winklevoss twins' code from their company called ConnectU." Now, when I say they imaged every single hard disk, that was about a dozen hard disks. At the time, Facebook had about a dozen computers. That's all. So I used CodeMatch, which was a very early version of the program. To compare the two sets of code, it probably took about a week, maybe even two weeks, running continuously on the computer that I had, because at the time computers that I ran CodeMatch on were much slower than they are today, and、uh, the tool was less sophisticated, less automated than it is today. So it ran for about two weeks, and then I took another two weeks, maybe three weeks, working eight, ten to fourteen hours a day. Reviewing the results of the code match comparison and determining whether any copying had occurred. At the end of that comparison, I wrote up a report, and my report was submitted to the other side as part of a settlement negotiation. So Facebook wanted to settle with ConnectU、uh, rather than go to trial. So we submitted my report. Now ConnectU had hired a number of well-respected Code analysts, and they had submitted their own report, and their report said that there were ninety-nine thousand files to compare, ninety-nine thousand source code files, and of course, it's impossible to compare every combination of ninety-nine thousand files. 
So they put a team of crack experts, uh, software experts, on the case, and they were able to compare 6,000 files. And their conclusion is that they found no signs of copying within those 6,000 files, but they still had 93,000 files to examine, and they were confident that they would find some copying in those 93,000 files. My report said I had been able to compare every single combination of all 99,000 files, and I found not a single indication of copying. Uh, some time after that, maybe a week or two after that, the case settled. There were still some issues between the companies, but at least the issue of whether the code had been copied was gone. I had shown that there was no copying. So it was a very exciting case, and it was in the news a lot. And friends and colleagues would come up to me and they'd say, uh, do you know about this case? Or do you have an opinion on it? And I would have to say, I don't have an opinion because the lawyers had asked me not to talk about the case. There were ongoing cases related to it that went on for another five years. So for five years, I had done this great job and worked on this really interesting case, and I couldn't talk about it. Uh, and I found that a lot of what people told me when they were telling me the details, they got wrong, but I couldn't correct them because they would ask me how I knew. So I would just listen and not say anything. Eventually, a movie came out called The Social Network, which I highly recommend. It is a great movie written by one of the greatest screenwriters in Hollywood ever, and my, one of my favorite screenwriters, Aaron Sorkin. Uh, so it's a great movie about the founding of Facebook, and it discussed this exact case that I was working on. In fact, that was the major focus of the movie. And by that time, I had used the proceeds from that case to hire a team of people. So I was expanding my company and, of course, expanding this, the, the tools that I had developed. So I took my team out to see the movie, and I also saw it with the legal team. The lawyers that I'd worked with on the case, they took the entire team out and invited me to come see the movie. It was fairly accurate. There were details I wasn't aware of, but the lawyers tell me that they were accurate. And again, a great movie. And one thing I like to do is when I talk about the movie at a conference or with friends, I joke that uh, I'm in the movie. I say in the scene where Mark Zuckerberg is sitting there and he's waving a report in his hand and yelling at the Winklevoss twins, and saying, I didn't copy your code. I, I joke around that if you freeze the frame and zoom in on that report, you'll see my name on it. Facebook案例的见解 该公司是软件知识产权分析工具的领导供应商。他也是软件知识产权侦探手册、测量比较和侵权检测（The Software IP Detection Detectives Handbook, Measurement, Comparison, and Infringement Detection）一书的作者。亲爱的观众，请记得回来观看CTV的Zeman Software for Seek and Save on IP。不要错过磨练您的技能，并且提高您的职业竞争力的机会。